Hello, fellow Redbirds. Welcome to Bird Fans Forever, podcast number 43. Please follow us on Bird Fans Forever Twitter account to be notified of our latest podcast videos and participate in our fun polls. Also go to our website, www.birdfansforever.com, where you can find a list of our previous podcasts. Finally, go visit Bird Fans Forever on YouTube and slam dunk that subscribe button. YouTube has our archive of classic Redbird games that we've obtained from so many kind Redbird fans who shared their video libraries with us. We're still adding to our list of online games, so head over to your YouTube site and find an old game to watch. A good game to watch from this past season is the 2023 game versus Belmont, the first conference win at the Redbirds for our guests today. Just a couple of things to promote here. If you're available on October 3rd, then sign up to see Night with the Birds with Jay Billis. And um, go get your Empower the Nest beer from Keg Grove Brewing Company. Pemberton will be bringing mine tomorrow. We'll make sure they kick up production for when this video goes viral. <laughs> Our guest today is the 20th head coach of the Illinois State Redbirds. As a men's basketball player, he helped the College of Wooster to three North Coast Athletic Conference regular season championships and to three NCAA tournaments. He's been assistant coach for the Illini, Butler, and most recently at Ohio State University under head coach Chris Holtman. He was hired after the end of the 21-22 season to be the head coach of our Redbirds. We'll be right back with Redbirds men's basketball coach, Ryan Peden. Hello and welcome to episode 43 of Bird Fans Forever with Coach Ryan Peden. Steve, to you. Hey, Coach, welcome. So, year two, now that you're a seasoned veteran, right? <laughs> how does the staff come in in year two, how does it differ from year one when you guys were assembling that staff and everything? Well, yeah. Um, first of all, great to be with you guys. This is, uh, this is awesome. I want to thank you for all that you do for um, Redbird Nation here, especially the basketball, men's basketball program. And um, you've, you've aided me, uh, getting me up to speed with some of uh, Redbird basketball history that I would not have otherwise known. And uh, you guys have a blast with it. So it's easy to watch. And, and uh, I've watched a few of the episodes. And I just want to say thank you for, for all your efforts. Um, uh, yeah, Steve, uh, get, getting into uh, your question there with year two, um, you know, it's, it's, it feels a lot different um, from my seat just because we do have, um, we've got a set system and rhythm um, and working knowledge with our staff of how we do things. Um, we, we, uh, year one, you're implementing everything for the very first time um, over and over and over and over from, you know, for, from our uh, from our perspective, it was from March, really, March all the way until the following April when you finish the whole cycle of uh, the transfer portal and finishing recruiting. So um, it, there's, a, there's a lot um, that goes into that, um, especially when you're bringing a staff together for the first time. Um, but uh, from, our, from our stance as a, as a coaching staff, it will look a lot like year one um, in the early stages, just from our teaching um, background here, like what, what, what types of things we're implementing, um, the base fundamentals that we're, uh, you know, in, involving with our day-to-day -day practices, and then um, reteaching the system. We have eight new players out of 15 yeah. on our, excuse me, on our roster. So you're, you're talking about seven scholarship players, one walk-on. So a little over half of the guys that are in our circle are brand new. So as yeah. a coach, uh, this is this is the new norm, right? It, it, it's going to yeah. be that that extreme every year. But I have to assume that um, the new guys, which they they don't, uh, they, 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 I have to assume they know nothing, and uh, have to teach it from its very uh, base stages, and uh, get them familiar as quickly as we can with our terminology, um, our drills, our, our uh, you know our belief system, what's important to us, and. Uh, I think I think as a as a group of coaches, we we've got to be really really dialed in on um, how we teach, how we communicate, and then how they how quickly our, our players are able to pick that up. So you have seven returning players, right? How are you guys relying on them, you know, during this learning process versus like year one, you had everyone was brand new to the system. Yeah, everybody's learning everything for the first time, so. 
It's a real um, noticeable advantage for us now where we have called uh, called regenerative leadership, right? And in organizations right. and companies or basketball programs like ours, ideally, um, you want to have the upperclassmen, the juniors and the seniors teaching the freshmen and the sophomores sort of learning, learning the rhythm of it. Um, and then that regenerates itself over and over. Um, we don't have a full uh, regenerative leadership model, uh, but we do have one year's worth of guys that know how we do things. And um, we have a phrase that we, we use, we say, do what we do all the time, D-W-W-D. And um, we've got to teach our players what that is. What, what does it look like? How do we listen? How do, how, do we, um, how do we talk to one another? How do we respond to tough things? How do we encourage one another? Um, how do we communicate? All those kinds of things, you know, that um, maybe people on the outside don't think are important, but I think if you're building a program and the kind of program we want to build that um, does things a very uh, specific way, then uh, you, we have to be very specific about how we want our players to uh, sort of process the information. So um, I think you got to keep it simple. I think I think going into year two, um, we want to build on some things that we did last year and within our system. But um, there's a there's a reality that we've got to kind of figure out this team all over again. Um, but that's that's kind of the norm in college ball nowadays. And you got to know the strengths and weaknesses, or the perceived strengths and strengths and weaknesses of your team going into the year and then uh, yeah. be able to adapt and adjust on the fly. So se second year in, you get to put the schedule together. Like, what's your scheduling philosophy and then how did you incorporate that into this year's schedule? Sure, so um, I, I, I sort of learned this last year, right? Because um, you, you think there's a lot, there's so much when you're an assistant coach um, that you're thinking about, okay, when I get a uh, chance to have my own program, this is how I want to schedule. And uh, then you get to that moment and I didn't feel like we could necessarily schedule in year one how I wanted to schedule. Um, <laughs> I, I think my biggest job and, and responsibility is in putting the schedule together is give your team the opportunity to gain confidence and momentum in the non-conference schedule. I think that's, um, I also want to challenge our team, I, I do. Um, but last year, uh, piecing together the whole roster when we did, um, I felt a little bit different than maybe I would in a normal year, two or three or four years in. Um, this year, a lot of turnover again, but um, we've got some pieces that I feel really, really strongly about that are coming back. Um, some pieces that we added and then some freshmen that we added. Uh, I want to challenge them a little, even more. Uh, so we're working our way up to the type of schedule, non-conference schedule that I would like to have. I really believe in, um, I think, challenging your, your teams early in the season. Um, even when you take, take some games on the chin can be very valuable. I thought a real mm -hmm. moment of growth for us last year was the three losses that we had um, in the Cayman Islands. Not necessarily the results that we would have wanted to have uh, right. for sure, but we played some really good teams down there. Um, but when we came back from that, I, I thought we put our heads down, uh, we licked our wounds, and then got better from uh, those experiences yeah. in the camp. And so um, I want to challenge our team. I think this year's schedule definitely does that. We play uh, a home-and-home, home, uh, the beginning of a home-and-home home with St. Louis for the first time since 1992. Um, yeah. That'll be a challenging game on the road. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of tournament teams from last year. Northern Kentucky, who's a tremendous mid-major program, Southeast Missouri State. Um, we've got, uh, of course, uh, Norfolk State. Norfolk State is a perennial 20-win team yep. as well. Uh, yep. We play in the Gulf Coast Showcase, which I knew going in, what a challenging um, event that, <laughs> that will be. That's all mid-major teams, but really, really good ones. And then uh, North Dakota State, very well-coached program well-respected. Eastern Illinois, same thing. They've got uh, Marty Simmons is, is a hell of a coach. And uh, and then, of course, we play uh, the blue and white uh, right after Christmas. So uh, right that'll, after be a, Christmas. that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun for, for our guys. That'll be a great challenge. Um, 
second time I've I've been there, and uh, that's a great environment. So I think that that's something that uh, you know I think will be a great opportunity for our for our players, for our program, for our school, and uh, you know uh, I, I know our players were very very excited uh, about that. So. Yeah, we're, we're pumped. I think this is a real challenging schedule and um, um, one that I think is going to require us to, to be really, really good early on in the season. So, so one of the games that's getting a lot of attention right now is actually the exhibition game <laughs> <laughs> against Wesleyan. I mean, normally that doesn't get much, much attention. You want to talk about like how that came about? And I really like the way you guys have uh, set it up as a community event and, and, and some of the charity that goes along with it. Yeah, sure. So um, Ron Rose approached me last summer uh, when we were on the road recruiting, and um, he said, hey, let me ask you a question. Would you consider ever consider playing us? And I said, yes. I said, Ron, I was going to call you after the summer and approach you about it because that's been on my mind. Uh, year one, I wanted to play my alma mater. That was our first game, College of Worcester. Um, I'm a div former Division three student athlete. So um, if I can sort of bring some attention to Division three programs, uh, that's in my that's sort of in my in my soul. Um, I I, I want to do that um, when I, when I can. And uh, uh, Ron Rose is a guy that I have great admiration and respect for. So he's a uh, he's been there many years. Has had great teams. Has built a program that's built to last nationally. Uh, respected yep. uh, in, among, among the Division three ranks and. Uh, the more research I did on the game and talked to people, you know, I, my first question is, why in the hell haven't we played in over 50 years? Yeah, and yeah. so I got some of the backstory there on mm -hmm. that. And, uh, you know, not for nothing, uh, we owe those dudes. So I'm, I'm ready to I'm get <laughs> We're coming off a loss 53 years ago. And, and uh, don't think that uh, – that that's not in our in our thought process either. So we got to get this right. And uh, no, but in in all uh, in all seriousness, a, a great game for our community. I, I uh, when when I came here, one of the things that I said uh, I wanted to do was build a team that would make our community proud and uh, a program that was going to be invested in our community. This is a great place. Like I've been here a year yes. and I've lived in a lot of different cities, large, small, college towns, this, this town and uh, all that it, it stands for, the quality of people that are here, um, the, the, uh, the families, I think there's a lot more younger families um, than I would have anticipated. This is not a town that has no business or commerce. We have plenty of that. Um, it's not a town that lacks uh, um, desire to support their sports teams. We have a lot of that, and we have a real hunger um, for basketball, in particular, in this community. So um, that's important to me that I'm I'm putting sort of putting my uh, money where my mouth is, you know. And <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to do my part to follow up, and our part as a program to uh, unite our community, bring them together, and have some fun on a Sunday afternoon in October. So, coach, you mentioned you got you got eight new players. You got seven players returning on the roster. So, why don't you give us an overview of the team, like, and, and then maybe like what you guys have been working on over the summer? Well, I'm, I'm really, first of all, I'm really excited about this team. Um, we have uh, we're going to look a lot different than we did last year, and um, we have a lot more depth at uh, really across the board at all all of our positions. Um, we've got an older team. We've got some guys that uh, we've recruited that are older. We've got some guys that were younger and have uh, matured another year in our system. So um, I've seen, I've seen, I see a difference in uh, not only the makeup of the roster, but the physical stature and the physical bodies that we do have. So um, that excites me, especially after going through uh, a year in the Missouri Valley Conference and, and uh, learning about. Uh, the types of players, the types of bodies, the types of teams uh, that win. And I think there, there, is, there is a specific formula there that I think um, you don't have to necessarily uh, uh, build your roster around. But I think uh, what I learned in year one was that smart, that tough, and skilled teams win in our conference. And um, I've thought that from afar uh, for a long time about the Valley, but I, I learned that firsthand that 
Um, smart, tough, and skilled really wins in, in this conference. So we tried to build our roster with that in mind, um, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, I think it's no secret we turned the ball over way too much last year. Um, I've told our team, I, you're dealing with a coach, and, and I said, I, my apologies to the new guys in here, but you're dealing with a coach that has post-traumatic stress syndrome from <laughs> her, her, uh, last year. And uh, I don't ever want to... Uh, put ourselves in in that position again, and we got to do a better job coaching that as well, and and demanding that uh, out of our players and helping them out. So uh, that's not, I'm not sit here sitting here saying that's all on the players. That's that's uh, something we've got to we've got to uh, emphasize a heck of a lot more, and and make sure that we're a lot more skilled than we were last year. Skill is something that um, translates home or road, old or young. Uh, if you can dribble, pass, and shoot, that never goes out of style. It's time tested, and uh, I know I'm preaching to the choir. I see Pemberton up there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like the said the inner uh, Bob Donawald is coming out in him. And, and, Bob Bender, uh, I'll take Coach Bender. Well, I'll take Coach. I played four under Donawald and one under Bender. But you, as a player, you get it right. I mean, you take care. The less turnovers you got, the better off you are. I mean, two key things: rebound and in. Tried and true, and no turnovers, right? Less turnovers, you stay in the game. So, yeah. Possessions. Yeah, it's a possession battle. I mean, you've got to, you've got to value possessions, um, especially in our conference, which is such a well-coached conference, uh, generally speaking, a lower-paced conference uh, for the most part. Oh, yeah. You're going to get into these games, and um, it, it's it's a lot harder to, to uh, fast break than people might think because people are sacrificing – uh, their ability to crash the offensive glass, and they're not. And they're saying, hey, we're going to get back and set our defense. So right, right, uh, right. You're, uh, consequently, you've got to value possessions at a really, really high uh, yeah. level. Yeah. And, um, and that's, that's, that's something. You know, we, we had 17 games last year decided by three possessions or less. Think about that. 17 games decided by three possessions or less. And um, – we were seven and ten in those games. Uh, we had six six games decided by one possession or less. Right, right, right. And um, you know, uh, uh, a couple of possessions saved here and there uh, can make the difference in, in the outcome of a game. Um, I know you guys know that, but that's that's uh, that's something that we've yeah, got to be a yeah. lot better with. So uh, we've we've recruited and uh, been intentional about recruiting uh, freshmen and uh, portal guys that. Um, embody those types of characteristics. Guys that come from uh, programs uh, where they've been coached very well, where they understand the value of a possession, um, where passing is a commodity, you know, where they it's valued. And um, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's part of what excites me so much about our team. And, and uh, you know, uh, uh, we've got guys that, that I think fit what we needed uh, to address from a roster and stylistic standpoint and uh, you know I'm, I'm just I'm really really pumped about about the team and about the guys that we've added and also obviously about the guys that we have coming back I, I, I feel very very strongly about the guys that we have uh, coming back in our locker room and uh, love those guys we, we were at the uh, meet meet the team and I'll tell you the one thing it's just it was noticeable difference the physicality of, of this team the, the physiques even the returning players, I mean, it, it's – they've hit the weight room. Okay. Yeah. They were and nudging you out for some pizza, weren't they, Steve? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't even they get there. Out. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. But, I mean, the Missouri Valley, I mean, for a mid-major, they do slow down the pace, and it is a physical game. And, and there's a lot of defensive first teams there. And, and, and you know, I, I think – in the long run, that's going to help you guys this year, you know, being oh. able to match that, that physical presence. For sure. Um, you know, I, I think the guys, even let's just take the guys that we've added in the portal. You know, um, you know, you got Brandon Lee, who transfers from Illinois. He's seven foot one. He's got a seven foot three wingspan. Um, he's up over 240 pounds right now. He's gained around 15 pounds since he got here in the summer, 12 to 15 pounds since he got here in the summer. Um, Miles Foster is a guy that, um, he's six foot seven, but he has a seven foot three wingspan. 
His arms oh, are freaking long. long arms, yes. Long arms. I mean, he, he, yeah. he shakes hands with you from across the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's intimidating, you know, it's intimidating. Yeah. But he, he can do so much. We learned defensively this summer in practice how many uh, balls that he gets his hands on, how many deflections he has, his ability to uh, affect shots on a, on a jump shot or on a shot, any type of shot contest. Um, so he's a, he's a very uh, unique player, a guy that can uh, is very interchangeable, can can switch ball screens. I'm I'm really really anxious to see um, you know how he um, sort of molds his game and, and he's he's gotten himself into really really good shape uh, compared to when he first arrived on campus and um, I think that'll open up a whole nother uh, chamber for his game. So. Um, and then, the and then our other guys here, I think are on the perimeter, I think are high-level defenders. I do. I think uh, Dalton Banks, I know he is. He can disrupt a basketball game with his ball pressure, his ability to move his feet, his anticipation. He's, cat, he's got cat-like quickness, and he's healthy. Um, we, we respected Dalton Banks on film, um, regardless of minutes that he played, uh, regardless of role, regardless of health, we had great respect for him uh, in our office. And when he became available in the portal, we said, go, let's go, and uh, really pursue him. So he's, he's an impact guy on that defensive side, and then he's an impact guy with his, his feel and IQ on the yeah, offensive yeah, side. Yeah. And, uh, last and certainly not least, Jordan Davis. I, th I think uh, you know, Jordan's built like a – Free safety. It's like why well, I, I think the guy he would remind me of is like Ronnie Lott. Uh, you know, he's big and strong and physical. Really he's the guy up. from. He's the young San man from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Oh. Ronnie Lott. Yeah, he, well, he's from Wisconsin. Ronnie Lott. Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. You didn't watch. You didn't watch much NFL football, Pemberton, huh? That was your era too. <laughs> I, I, I did watch football, but not during foot, not during basketball season. There was no time That's to right. watch football on Sunday. We were watching tape. Game tape. <laughs> So, yeah, no, no, uh, I meant the, the young man's from Wisconsin. Ronnie Lopp yeah. played in yeah, San Francisco. Shut up, Steve. You got, three, <laughs> three guys. you got three guys from Wisconsin. We haven't recruited from Wisconsin in a long time. Yeah. And now you got three yeah. on the team this year. Yeah, I, I, I love, uh, you know, sometimes you generalize, I think, sometimes in, in recruiting. You know, um, well, a guy from Indiana, well, he's been, you know, he grew up and, Basketball's mm -hmm. in his blood, and he's been coached yeah, a certain yeah. way. And this is Hoosiers, um, but go recruit Indiana. Eh, it's fairly true. It's fairly true. Um, yeah, you know, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's part of the fabric of that of that culture there. It, yeah. it, it, kids that, that play sports, they're going to play. They're going to play basketball in Indiana, and they're going to yeah. be coached yeah. at a really high level. And I'd say the same with Illinois too. I think Illinois is very similar. Um, it's a great basketball state. Um, there's more. There's more players. We did a postseason study here because I'm I'm trying to learn about what wins in our conference from all angles. And there's more players uh, in the Missouri Valley Conference from the state of Illinois than any other state in the union. So um, really? that that excites me. Like that. I mean, obviously, yeah. I'm the coach at Illinois State. That excites me, and um, I don't want to recruit the state just because it's the state i want to recruit the state because we believe in the state and we right. want the right fit you know guys right. that fit uh, how we're going to build this program and uh, fit the mold that we're looking for um wisconsin and minnesota i sort of lump together and i have always from afar been very impressed with uh, how basketball has been coached up there i think both are uh, fairly under recruited because you have uh, fewer schools. You know, I grew up in Ohio. There's 14 Division I schools. Uh, you know, there's, no, there's yeah. nobody flipping by, you know. Um, right, right. You go up there and you can find some gems that are willing to leave the state. And, um, you know, we, we love those, those two that we got from Wisconsin, um, uh, or three we got from Wisconsin, yeah, actually. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, with Jordan and, and – um, uh, we, we love we love all three of those guys, and they all bring a, um, a tenacity and an edge that uh, I know we value and that we need it. And um, they're they're all guys that play with a real chip on their shoulder. So um, I'm excited. I'm, I think part of 
what my role here in the preseason is is going to be to um, speak the truth, but not. I want to temper expectations a little bit because uh, I'm excited. You know, I think it's it's natural. Um, we've got a, a lot more pieces and some guys that I think really, really uh, are eager to prove themselves um, and and play for Illinois State. So um, it's it, it's it's going to be fun, and uh, you know, I'm looking okay, forward so you, to what we got. All right, coach. So you you talked about your transfers. Let's talk about the three freshmen. All right, so yeah. let's hear your thoughts on them. Now, I'm going to remind fans, I've been that freshman. So one day they're going to be superstars, and the next day they're not going to know which way the court is, and it's just an 18-year-old kid, right? You're going to have to be patient with these young men as they grow into what we need to be, the Redbird way, right? But, yeah, sure. they look like they're very smart kids and a lot of basketball IQ there, right? So now you got to develop. And it's confidence, right, because – they're going to get into situations that they haven't faced with people that are as athletics. In high school, everybody goes, oh, I saw so-and-so play in high school. Great. They were probably the best player on the team by far, right? Yeah. Now you get into college, you played college basketball coach, everybody is as good as you or better. And how do you perform at that level, right? And, and so yeah. talk about your freshman. Sure. So uh, uh, well, while we were talking about Wisconsin, I'll stay up there uh, Johnny Kentinger. <laughs> Johnny, uh, when he committed to us, as a matter of fact, so we're having individual player meetings right now. And, uh, I was telling Johnny this this morning. We met at 8 a.m. this morning, and, and I said, you know, when, when you committed to us, like, it was, we, we loved you, man. Like, we loved you. But there was a, a little bit of a leap of faith that we were taking in you because we hadn't yeah. seen him play against high-level competition, uh, like on the EYBL circuit yet because yep. he committed to yep. us leading into july and um everything that we saw that month told it told me everything i needed to know about him right um, um and not that we were doubting that i just hadn't seen that and and you know when you uh, attach yourself to a, a point guard um that's a freshman that you really love like you better really love it you better really love him and yeah. when he went out on the circuit in July, he just, he brought it, man. He brought it. He's got a competitive edge that he plays with. Um, he's, you would say, well, he's not the most athletic. No, but he gets to his spots just about every time. Well, okay. coach, not super tall. Well, but he can shoot that jump shot over people. He's got great range, and he can get to his spots where he knows Amen. how to score. Yep. Kids scored over yep. 2,000 points in high school. Uh, he's the all-time winningest player in the history of his high school. Brevin Pritzel, who played at Wisconsin, uh, graduated from that high school, and they've got a great tradition yeah. there at the pier. So um, did we know that he was going to be Mr. Basketball? No, but we knew we loved him. And I felt from day one like he was a player that people who come and watch Redbird games and who have for generations um, will really identify with. And and um, that will he will be a fun dude to watch play, um, and he's got toughness and grit that uh, goes far beyond any of the stats that you know that he'll bring Absolutely. to the table. So I, I I'm really excited about him, and comes from an awesome family, um, and and parents. I mean, so much of this is is the parents that you have and how you've been raised, and um, we, we we love we love Johnny. Okay, I'll move to Ty Pence, uh, Ty Pence. You know, when, when he visited campus for the first time, he's got an interesting story because we had called him and we had tried to build relationship with him over the phone throughout the spring. Um, at the time, Ty was being recruited really heavily, you know. Um, big, big time schools and Big Ten schools had, had offered him, Illinois offered him. Um, I know Iowa was recruiting him, Butler was recruiting him, Notre Dame was looking yeah. at him, Loyola at one point was, I think, really trying to get him to commit and um, he just wasn't ready. And um, I remember a conversation I had. I was walking my neighborhood, uh, and this was uh, late May, early June, I believe. And his dad said, you know, Coach, he said he just hasn't had that aha moment yet. Um, and um, he hasn't maybe connected um, to where he's had that aha moment. And at that moment, I was like, man, there is a, you know, it was like the movie – Dumb and Dumber, where he says, so he goes, "There's a chance." <laughs> and and uh, 
and and I was, uh, you know, I was really really excited. And so we shortly thereafter, about a week, ten days later, um, Ty and his family came and visited, um, and his mom will tell you even now, like coach, you guys really weren't in the picture like that, even on the trip there. And, um, and I think we just connected. And I think that's something, Good. you know, that we all search for in life is, you know, we have a great product here to sell. Um, we have uh, great facilities. We have an awesome campus, history and tradition, fan support, and everything you'd want. But um, when you're starting a program like this, you've got to be able, you better be able to sell your vision and identify with them. Like that's got to hit, hit a nerve with these people. Yeah, yeah. Um, Otherwise, you know, there's not a whole lot that would separate you, you know, other than the fact that we were an hour from home. So that connection with that family was really, really important. Um, and we fell in love with the family, like right away. And I think there was a yeah. mutual feeling when he left campus that day, like, man, something happened today that, that, that kind of transcends, uh, you know, just basketball recruiting. Like it, it, we felt really, really strongly about them. and. Um, you know, I think I think it, it started to take real shape after that. So, to get him, uh, you know, that was a big that was a big get because you know, Wake Forest was recruiting him all the way till the very end, and uh, he called and FaceTimed us and committed. And you know, that's he, awesome. He, uh, yeah, we, we were we were jumping for joy. So, um, we're really excited. He's a 2,000 point score. He's a he's as humble and hardworking as any kid. Um, in our program, um, he, uh, you know, he's an, he's an extremely hard worker and sometimes too much. And, and uh, uh, I admire that, that work ethic that he's got. Um, he's got to be, you know, a real uh, thirst and quench for, for uh, learning. And he's always asking questions and uh, wanting to be, he wants to be great. And uh, as all of our guys do, but he, he's, he stood out to me as a, you know, in that regard as a freshman just over the summer. So I'm really excited about him. Uh, the third one is, is Chase Walker. And Chase is a guy that I think people probably know the least about uh, of our three, but that I think once they get to know him, will fall in love with this kid. And he's got a, a, an unbelievable story. Um, you know, he, he went to high school at St. Charles Preparatory School, which was one of my high school's rivals back in the day so my high school and his high school are a mile and a half apart and um, I've talked all kinds of trash to him about about that and let him know we never lost to St. Charles and then he said he's never lost Bexley's gym so uh, we had we had a connection uh, with him just through relationships um, uh, from when I was at Ohio State and um, and and know, knowing him and watching him and feeling like, um, hey, someday that might be a guy that you, you know could turn out to be really really good. Um, yeah. He committed to us. He was 340 pounds. You know, um, mm -hmm. he's very very gifted. He's got tremendous footwork. He's the best passing big man I've ever recruited. And I'm saying that coming in the door, sure. I probably shouldn't. That's the ultimate coach's jinx right there. <laughs> uh, I'm giving him, I'm giving him that kind of, uh, you know, uh, I'm lauding him that much. But he's a tremendous passer. Um, got great footwork. He's nimble on his feet. He's very skilled. He can yeah. shoot the ball, um, and he's got a body that you can't coach. You know, um, yeah. I love having yeah. a big. Thick body that you can you can really um, impose your yourself with, and um, we didn't have that last year. I think you guys you guys probably know that if you saw us play, and um, um, so he, he he's I'm really excited about him. His his body is in a much different place now. Um, he was down to 285 uh, this spring, and before he he broke his toe, he broke yeah. a toe, and that put him out for. Her, shoot six weeks or so. So um, he's, he's just getting back into it. Um, he joined us the last two weeks of the summer and uh, he was really impressive and, and really excited about him. I, I don't want to put too much on him uh, early because I think that- He's still a um, freshman. He's gonna need to get- Yeah, he's a freshman and he's a big. Shape. It's harder for bigs. Yeah. yeah, you know, John, it's, it's harder. It's harder for bigs to, you know, the, the, for, the physicality and the nuances of 
defending in the post and then having to be able to sprint out and do it on a ball screen. But uh, he's he's really really uh, gifted and um, I, I, I'm I, I'm really excited about him. Um, he can yeah. really score yeah. down low and um, so he he's he's going he's a great kid. He's got a heart of gold and uh, he's. <laughs> He's one of those guys when you see him on campus, like you you don't ever forget that dude. Like he's he's got a smile that you know he's grinning from ear to ear. So uh, really excited about all three of these guys, and and they're all completely different uh, as players. But what they bring to the table is is three young men that um, are our kinds of guys, and I think three young men that uh, really prioritize winning. And uh, th- those are the kinds of guys we want to build the program with, even in this uh, era. I'm thinking yes. through the lens of uh, planting our roots, you know, and um, uh, these are three guys that allow us to do that. And um, I pray that they, you know, have long and prosperous careers here and never transfer, you know. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and uh, but but they're guys that really fit us and, and will uh, embody all the qualities that we got. Coach Peden, thank you for being on. This is our wrap up. Here's where you get the close. However you want to close. So you're just opening the floor up for me, Pemberton, just like opening that. Opening up the floor, yep. Yeah. Wide open. Like, that was my job. Oh, open I set mic. screens. Is... I'm going to set a big old screen for riding. Yeah. You can go down. You can go down the lane. You can pull up, hit a nice three. You can pull and drive in. You know, and be like Buford and hit that nice 10, 12 floater. Right. However you want to go. Well, I appreciate it. First, I, 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 I want to probably just say. Uh, thank you, first of all, for uh, having me on here. Thanks for all that you do here. This is a, this is fun. You guys have a blast with it, and uh, it's a great way to to uh, you know reminisce on on uh, you know great stories, histories, traditions from from our programs past, and uh, um, you know it's something that, that I take very seriously as a head coach. I'm, it's an honor to be the head coach here, and I I'm, I mean that from the bottom of my heart, and. Uh, uh, you know, since we we got here, the vision has not changed at all. I want to. There's a specific way I want to do it um, that is sustainable. That is, uh, uh, I believe, uh, as we build this thing uh, up year by year, uh, I want to build a program that's built to last here, and appreciate everybody's uh, interest in our program and, and their patience with it because um, you got to go through some mud, you know, early <laughs> on, and it's we're going to still have to go through mud to get where we want to go and it's the road to the top is not necessarily always smooth um, but I know that we're we're doing it uh, the right way and uh, I want to build a program that honors our our past and those that came before us um, that's we're here because of guys like you Pemberton and, and and all of your teammates and guys who have laid the foundation and you know our code uh, to get in our locker room is is and uh, I want our guys to punch that in and, and see that and feel that every day. We're we're, we're chasing uh, we're chasing the NCAA tournament down like like crazy. Amen, brother. Yep. Uh, yeah. So we that's, that's the, the ultimate vision and goal. And um, you know, in the meantime, uh, we we got to make sure our our young men they've got their heads down that we're getting the most out of each and every day. I have a strong belief that the results will take care of themselves. And uh, uh, I know this. This is. Uh, this is a really special town and a community. And uh, uh, when when this thing does uh, take off like a skyrocket and and uh, catch catch fire, um, it, it's going to become uh, the best it can be because of the young men in that locker room, but because of the people in our community and the stands that support us. So um, I, I, I'm glad to be here, honored to be here, and thanks for having me. Coach, always, anytime you want to come back or you want to send players, you just let us know. Um, love telling the stories and, and energizing the Redbird fan base, right, um, and getting the news out. We do want to remind everybody that go support Empower the Nest at, at uh, um, um, oh, God. Keg Grove. Keg Grove. Keg Grove. <laughs> I'll, I'll fix that in post, Coach. So, but yes, don't forget about Keg Grove to help support the team um, and go empower the nest. This has been episode 43 with Coach Ryan Peden. Hit it, big Mr. Diner. <laughs>